So this is Hooke's Law and I'm going to go through all you need to know about Hooke's Law and the practical that you will need to do as part of your GCSE to measure the spring constant or the stiffness of a spring. This is Gorilla Physics, other channels show you the content but I'm going to teach you how to get the grade 9. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for all my latest videos so you get your grade 9 in GCSE Physics. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to show you how to master the topic of Hooke's Law, that's force extension graphs and elastic strain energy, and the practical that you need to know like the back of your hand, which is the force extension practical. Remember, force is proportional to extension, that's Hooke's Law. This is a really good one for getting some definitions right, for collecting accurate data, and being able to plot and use a graph. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to get some data from a simulation and then plot a graph using Excel, so using a spreadsheet on your computer. But you do need to be able to do both, so I suggest that you also make sure you can plot graphs by hand as well as using the spreadsheet. So it's just some context for you. Imagine pulling back a catapult. What do you have to do differently to make the elastic pull back further? And what happens to the pellet if you pull that elastic back further? You know, pause it now and have a little think about those things. Try and use these words in your answer. Force, extension and energy. These are the key ideas in this practical. If you want to pull the catapult back further, you're going to have to use more force. And that is the link between force and extension that we're going to investigate. And if you were to pull it back further, then the pellet would go faster from the catapult. And that's because there'd be more energy transferred to the pellet. You'd have a larger store of energy in the elastic store of the catapult if you did pull it back further and with more force. So there would be more kinetic energy of the pellet. Let's just have a little think about what's going to happen to these springs. Maybe pause the video now and have a little think about this. What do you think is going to happen to the spring? Well, as you increase the force, well, you're going to get more extension. What do you think is going to happen if you double the force? Well, if you double the force on the spring, you will get double the extension. And that's the idea of proportionality. That's the idea of proportionality, which is where you get a straight line through the origin. Or you can express that as well by saying double one thing, double the other. Proportionality is a really key idea in physics. So this experiment is all about that idea. It's all about proportionality, a straight line graph through the origin. So what we're going to do in this practical, in short, is we're going to increase the force on the spring and we're going to measure the extension. So really quickly, pause this now and think about what's the independent variable, what's the dependent variable, and what are the control variables you need to keep the same in this experiment. Well, the independent variable, what we change is going to be the force, or we call that the load on the spring. It is going to be measured in newtons. All forces are measured in capital N, newtons. What's the dependent variable? That's the extension. And the extension means the increase in length from the original length, and that's going to be in meters. Well, what are the control variables? We're going to use the same spring throughout, and we're going to fix a ruler in place. And that's going to mean that zero, the original length of the, of the spring, doesn't change during the whole practical. This is a practical that we don't actually repeat because we're expecting our spring to behave differently by the end of this practical than it did at the start. So if we repeated it again with the same spring, we would not actually get the same results as we did the first time through. And remember, we're measuring extension, not length. It might help you to measure the length of the whole spring every single time and then deduct the original length from each of your results. But I think there's a quicker and shorter way to do that. So I'm going to get Lewis from GCC Physics Online to show you the setup because I don't have this apparatus here at home. Thanks a lot, Lewis. This is my retort stand and what I can do is take a spring and I can just hang the spring either on the hook on the clamp here or even just over the rod there. And once it's hanging on there, we can then start to apply a force to it. Now to make sure that we get nice accurate readings, we want to make sure that the ruler is held as close to that spring as possible. We maybe use a set square to make sure that it's nice and vertical. You could even use another retort stand to actually clamp this. Now when you apply this one Newton weight to the bottom of the spring, it should extend because now there's a force being applied to it. So if we just add this on there, um, what we can now see is that there's an extension of this spring. What we can then start to do is very carefully load up this thing here with another weight. So maybe now we've got two Newtons. Once again, we can record the extension of that spring by looking at the total length, taking off the original length. And what we find is as we add more and more weight to that, it gets longer and longer. Hardly surprising. Make sure you subscribe to GCC Physics Online. It's really, really useful. There's a range of different packages for schools or for individuals. And Lewis is an absolute Lego end. I mean, check this out. Every exam board is covered. All the videos that he's made, they're just really, really fun way to look at things as well. I'm really impressed by his YouTube channel and the videos that he's made. 
So here's a really quick diagram and a risk assessment. Now, before you do any practical at home or in school, you need to conduct your own risk assessment and get that checked by an adult. So don't think this is all that you need to consider, but these are the kind of normal points. See if you can actually pause this now and fill in the blanks. I bet you can get a lot of these right. The setup is really straightforward. It's just a retort stand clamped in place to stop it falling off the desk and a spring clamped with a mass hanger that you add these slotted masses to. So the masses might fall and that could lead to minor injuries of your feet. So make sure that your feet aren't directly underneath the masses. The spring could snap and that could lead to injuries of the eye. So we do wear goggles during this practical, especially if you're going to increase beyond seven or eight newtons, then you certainly could have that spring snap and there would be enough energy to do damage to your eyes. So we do wear goggles. So because to do this accurately, you need to get to eye level with the spring, there is a greater risk of injury to the eyes. So we wear goggles at that point. You see, I've added to this diagram a fixed ruler because that allows us to be accurate. We've always got zero in the exact same place there. And and that's going to mean that we're more likely to be accurate with our measurement of the extension than if we were moving the ruler backwards and forwards every single time. It means that our ruler, we know zero, is always on the original length of the spring. So here's a method for you to pause and complete if you like. Really simple results table, force is the independent variable on the left, and you're gonna increase till about 10, maybe more, depending on your situation at school. Force on the left, force is the independent variable, and extension on the right. Extension could be in centimeters or meters, depending on what which one you want to use, but when you do the analysis with energy, you certainly need to convert to meters. Pause the video and have a go there. So I've also put in some typical results, which are welcome to use if you want to practice plotting some graphs. We want to get a spring constant for this set of data here to use later in our analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this into Excel, and then I'm going to ask it to plot a graph. Remember, force is on the y-axis and extension is on the x-axis in this case. We're interested in the gradient of this straight line section of the graph. Now, there is no kind of option in Excel to actually plot a straight line that then curves. So we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way, and we're just going to have to print this graph out. There we are. So force versus extension. This is our Hooke's Law section of the graph. This is our proportional section of the graph. So a straight line through that section there. And then we can just use a freehand curve because a line of best fit can be a straight line or a curve. It doesn't have to be a straight line as they often tell you in maths. We just have a freehand curve through this last section of the graph here. So I'm interested in this section when I'm interested in the spring constant. So I need to know the gradient of the straight line section, the gradient of the proportional section. So I'm going to turn that into one large triangle. And then the gradient is always the rise over the run. So how far up has the line gone over how far across has the line gone? So this has gone from zero to eight. So the rise is eight newtons, and from zero to 20 is the run, so the run is 20 centimeters. So our gradient is eight over 20, which is 0.4 newtons per centimeter. Now actually that corresponds to, in our Hooke's law, that corresponds to K, the gradient of a Y equals MX graph. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one more time for my actual spring constant. K would be eight over 0 0.2 meters. So eight over 0 0.2, 40 Newtons per meter. That is the stiffness of this spring, which we can use later in our energy calculations. When you write a method in the exam, keep it nice and simple. Say what you're measuring and what you're measuring with. Tell the examiner about the analysis that you're going to have to do with the results. So firstly, I'll just say set up the apparatus as in the diagram. Then add one mass at a time, and we're going to add 100 gram masses. Now, 100 grams is roughly equivalent to one newton. So we can just think we're adding one newton of force every single time. You measure the extension using a meter ruler. So what you're measuring, what you're measuring it with. Then you plot a graph of the force on the y-axis and extension on the x-axis. It's a little bit counterintuitive that you're going to plot force on the y-axis, extension on the x-axis. I know that's a little bit counterintuitive because you're probably used to putting independent variables on x-axis, but it makes our analysis easier later. So force goes on the y-axis in this case. If we do that, the gradient um, is the stiffness or the spring constant of the spring. Have a go at this of thinking why we actually do some of the accurate techniques that we do. This is match the description to the explanation, what we do and why we do it to be more accurate. Here they are then. Load the spring gently. Don't drop the masses onto the hanger and this prevents extra dynamic loads. So we want it to be a weight that is exerted on the spring rather than a dynamic load, rather than a deceleration force because of Newton's second law. 
You measure the extension using a fixed marker on the spring and you get down to eye level to the ruler. This makes extension more accurate by avoiding parallax error. So a parallax error is when you're looking at something from an angle and you either see too high or too low on the scale, depending on if you're looking from above or below. And we use a ruler with a one millimeter scale because this is a high enough resolution to spot a trend. So you should get results that look something like this. Force on the y-axis, extension on the x-axis. Essentially, you've got a straight line section. That is the proportional section of the graph. That is where the spring shows elastic behavior. We'll talk about that in a second. Then you get the limit of proportionality. That's the end of the straight line section. And then just after that, you get the elastic limit. That's where it stops behaving elastically and behaves plastically. And what does that mean, elastic and plastic? Well, it's about what happens once you take the deforming force away. So here's some definitions and they're not matched up correctly. So pause the video now and go ahead and try and match the keyword to the definitions. So plastic behavior is when an object does not return to its original shape once the deforming force is removed. Elastic behavior is when it does return to its original shape after a deforming force is removed. The limit of proportionality is the end of the straight line section on the graph. And Hooke's law means that force is directly proportional to extension. It's a straight line through the origin. If you double the force, you double the extension. Force is proportional to extension. It's a big idea in physics. And the spring constant, or sometimes called the stiffness of the spring, is the gradient of a force extension graph. So the steeper the graph is, the stiffer the spring is, or the higher the spring constant is. This measured in newtons per meter, so if you think about that, how many newtons do you need for each meter? then that should give you a handle on what that means to say the stiffness of the spring or the spring constant of the spring. So we're going to actually give this practical go now with the help of a FET sim. Now Google FET simulations and find the Hooke's law practical. It will run in your browser and you'll need to have a spreadsheet open at the same time. So essentially what I've got here is the simulation running on one side of the screen and I've got Excel running on the other side of the screen. So I've got force here on the left and I've got extension on the right and I've just got a bunch of controls that I can just change the spring constant or I can change the applied force. Now there's just some little checkboxes that you can't see just off the screen which show the values or show the equilibrium position, they can even show arrows to represent the forces on here. Um, but I'm just going to leave these two ticked off and I'm going to read force from this applied force here. So for zero force I've got zero extension. I'm going to increase the force I'll do increments on this one of 10 newtons. And I'm just reading off pairs of readings of force and extension. I'll sort out my significant figures in my table in a moment. So I can increase the significant figures just to make sure they're all consistent significant figures there. Okay, so I've got my set of results. Hopefully you can spot a pattern as you increase the force. Well, the extension increases, but it increases linearly. It actually increases proportionally. If I look at a pair of results, if I take it from 20 to 40, then the extension doubles. So double the force, double the extension. Now this doesn't have in it the idea of a plastic or elastic deformation, but it's good enough for just showing the idea of plotting a graph, which is what I want you to get from this. So now I've got my results. I want to show you how to actually plot the graph. So the easiest way to do this is to go insert XY scatter. Here we are. And then there's no graph there because I haven't told it what data to plot. And then I go select data. I go add new series and I want to tell it what my X values are by clicking in the X box and then highlighting the values I want to use on the X axis, clicking in the Y box and selecting and highlighting the values I want to use on the Y axis. Remember we're plotting force on the Y axis in this case. And then you've got exactly how you'd expect. You've got a graph that looks like a straight line, that looks like a proportional relationship, but it's missing some of those key elements you need to put on graphs, which are, of course, we don't really need a title because it's a graph is just whatever the X variable is versus whatever the Y variable is. So I'm going to go up here, add chart element, and I want to put axes titles on. I want a horizontal one and I want a vertical one. And I'm just going to edit them. That's force in newtons and this one is extension in meters and there's still another thing missing i haven't got a line of best fit so i need to right click on the data and i get 
add trend line. Now Excel calls a line of best fit a trend line. There's different options there, but you can see this is a linear relationship. This is a straight line graph. So I'm happy with it just the way it is. But I do want to display the equation on the chart. So this is my equation of a straight line. And this is, if you know what an equation of a straight line is in maths, it's always y equals mx or mx plus c. And the plus c here is just zero. The gradient is in the position of the m. So the gradient of this graph is 200 and the gradient of a force extension graph is the spring constant. If you think back to our simulation that we had, what did we have the spring constant set at? We had it at 200 newtons per meter. So thank you very much to FET uh, for some amazing sims. These are the best physics sims or the best science sims that are on the internet. If you ever are looking to try something out at home, then find a simulation FET sim and run yourself a virtual experiment. You'll learn an awful lot that way. I suggest you do this and then you, uh, you set it at 200 and you set it at any other value and you try and get a range of different values for force and extension through different spring constants. If you're in A-level or you're interested in going on, then looking at different systems of springs would be a very interesting thing. Let's talk about a bit more context then for Hooke's law, the idea that force and extension are proportional. Well, you can clearly see these two suspension forks, one's for a motorbike and one's for a car. I hope you can see which one's which. The car will need a stiffer suspension fork because it will need to deal with larger loads and we don't want the car to bottom out so we don't want it to extend too far. We also don't want it to extend past its limit of proportionality and it's therefore its elastic limit because we want that suspension fork to rebound and behave exactly the same after a deforming force has been removed. So we need it therefore to have a large enough elastic limit such that it can deal with the loads of the car. Now you've already probably experienced that because most of you would have taken apart a clicky pen and found that if you keep extending the spring over and over and over again, you get to a point where it doesn't go back to its original shape and you can't rebuild that pen. You can't push it back to its original shape and make that spring behave as it did before. So we need our springs in our suspension forks to deform repeatedly over and over and over again and return and still be just as stiff as they were before and the same size as well. So Hooke's law states that force is directly proportional to extension. Now a really quick word on algebra, there's two ways of writing the Hooke's law in algebra. Force is spring constant times extension is what they both mean. F equals K delta X is the way that I would always write this. Now delta means a change in and X means length. Or in AQA they use E which means extension. Now I don't like to use E because we use the exponential functions quite a lot in A-level physics and little e, lowercase e, is the exponential number. Here's a graph that you should really memorize. That is force is proportional to extension until the limit of proportionality. Shortly after that, you have the elastic limit, which is a point at which it starts to behave plastically. It will not return after this point to its original shape once a deforming force is removed. So you really do need to be able to calculate spring constants from graphs. Remember the stiffness of the spring is the gradient of a force extension graph. So the spring constant is the gradient of a force extension graph. We do calculations in exactly the same way every single time we do them. We write out the equation, then we substitute the numbers in and rearrange. 14 newtons goes where the F is and 0.5 meters goes where the extension is. And then you rearrange for the spring constant K 14 over 0.5 gives you 28 newtons per meter. Second one B, 4.7 is the force, so that goes where the force is, the F is. 1.6 is the extension, that goes where the delta X is. K equals 7.4 divided by 1.6, so that's just the inverse operations, gives you 4.6 newtons per meter. These two are a little bit more tricky because there's some unit conversions built in. So pause this one now and have a little crack at these. It's exactly the same idea, but make sure you convert your units before you put them into the equation. So this time our force is 4,000 Newtons. So convert that before we do anything with it. Our extension is 20 meters, that's okay. 4,000 goes where the F is and 20 goes where the Delta X is. So doing the inverse operations, 4,000 over 20 gives you 200 Newtons per meter. The next one, 28 newtons is the force, that's okay, that can go where the F is, but the extension is 0.32 meters. It's 32 centimeters is what's given on the graph, so just look out for those units before you go ahead and put them into your equations. Then again, inverse operations, 28 divided by 0.32 gives you 87.5 newtons per meter. They can give you these Hooke's Law questions in graph form or they can give you in question form. So here we have a question asking us to calculate a force given a spring constant and an extension. So the first thing we do every single time ever is we write out the equation, force is K delta X, um, and then identify the values from the question 
k, the spring constant is 27 newtons per meter, the extension is 0.63, they're both in SI units, so I can go ahead and substitute them in, and then it's simple calculation and rounding to two significant figures. If you round to two or three significant figures, you'll always be okay, except if they ask you for a specific number of significant figures. Make sure you put a unit on the end, force was that one. So this next one asks us, rather than calculate a force, it asks us to calculate an extension, but we're still gonna start in the exact same way. We're still just gonna write out the equation that we know we're gonna to need to use. We've got K, the spring constant is 14 newtons per meter, and we've got our force, which is 4.8 newtons. They're both okay, they're both in SI units, so we can crack on. We're just gonna substitute those into the equation, and then do the inverse operations. We've got times by 14 on one side, so we need to do 4.8 divided by 14 to give us the extension, which is 0.34 meters to two significant figures. So again, check the units are correct. That's an extension and it's in meters. So last one of these, this one's a bit tricky because you have to do some rearranging and some unit conversions. So calculate the spring constant of a spring, which is extended by 12 centimeters when a 2.5 kilo Newton load was placed on it. So F equals K delta X is our equation. Always start by writing out our equation that we're gonna use. Then identify the values. We've got F is 2.5 kilo Newtons. So convert that straight away, 2,500 Newtons. And our extension is the next thing we've got, 12 centimeters, so that's 0.12 meters. Input the numbers and rearrange for K. And in this case, you can write down whatever you got on the calculator and then do some rounding. So that I've rounded to two significant figures. Normally, unless you're told to, two or three significant figures is totally fine to give your answers to. Here's a summary of everything that you should know by now. Remember, keeping your methods really simple. I've just written a really simple practical method there. Add weights to the spring, measure extension using a ruler, plot force on the y-axis, extension on the x. The gradient is the stiffness, the spring constant. And being able to sketch those graphs is really important for your exams as well. There is Hooke's law as an equation, force equals spring constant times extension. And it is one that you do need to memorize for your GCSE exam. Hooke's law states that force is proportional to extension. The spring deforms elastically until the limit of proportionality and then the elastic limit. After this, you get plastic deformation, which means there's a permanent change in shape after the force is removed. And you do need to say that after the force is removed, not just a permanent change in shape. I hope you found that useful. Go over to gorillaphysics.com to check out all my videos organized by topic. And if you did find that useful, just comment yes sir in the comments.